Hi, I'm going to send you this picture. <laughs> I'm going to send you this picture. Good morning to YouTube. Looks like we're on YouTube as well. Uh, Business Express, uh, we're about to talk about InterSwitch raising a reported $110 million. But if we say, let's try again, what does InterSwitch do? <laughs> Okay, so InterSwitch is primarily a, a, a payment infrastructure. Oh, they've built a payment infrastructure that facilitates, you know, everything payments, you know, from, you know, uh, card payment, uh, online payment. Uh, they have, you know, they're involved in interbank transfers. So, so anything that has to do with the movement of money from one person to another, InterSwitch uh, is at the core of that, you know. Uh, I think they're one of the most successful switches, you know, outside of maybe say NIBS, which is the state-owned or bank-owned uh, uh, switches. You know, uh, they, are, they, they, they have, I mean, they do everything full time with DOS. They do everything, you know, Paystack does. They have a, you know, PSSP license. They have a PTSP license. They have a switching license. They have almost everything that ensures that yes, payment uh, to a large extent goes through. And that, that, that's not just a, a you know, uh, a simple thing. It's a massive. It's it's a it's a massive infrastructure they've built, right? And of course, you know, operate across different countries as well. Nigeria, Kenya, Ghana. You know, building that, building out payment infrastructure across all of those places. Yes. So, InterSwitch is like, uh, you know, the godfather of payment. You know, for Nigeria as 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 as, as it might be. Yeah. So, what does this this reported hundred and ten million dollars they haven't confirmed it but investigations are saying that's what I, what does it do for the valuation of the firm uh so the valuation was not reported right the valuation was not reported so uh it will be you know it will it's not be great to 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 speculate about what the valuation is but uh one thing we noticed from this round is that it is not it is uh it is a combination of two things it is uh you know an offer for subscription and offer for sale, right? Meaning that they invested some money in the company and they used part of the money to buy out existing shareholders or to buy out some of the stake of existing shareholders. So I would have said that, okay, $110 million, that's probably going to be like, say, 10% dilution. That's, you know, if it's $110 million, 10% dilution, that means the version of 1.1 billion. I could say 5% 5 dilution. That would, but again, in this, in this situation, it's difficult to speculate because we don't know the amount that is invested in the company. We don't know the amount that was that was used to buy out extension orders. But again, uh, you know, both Tana and 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 Leapfrog uh, bought enough stake in the business that 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 earned them a board seat. So it means that they are not just you know minority shareholders. They they, they have some you know uh, some decent stake in the business that would you know. Get them a board seat, right? So, and I think that's not trivial at all, right? So, I'm not sure what to think about the valuation, but again, it's because the details of the deal was not done, was not uh, made public, so it's it's just difficult to uh, to speculate. Well, InterSwitch is still a unicorn, right? Uh, I don't know. Valuation in 2017, the last 2016, 2017, when Visa put 200 million in the yeah. company, that, that gave them a billion dollar valuation, now, right? Well, it gave them a billion dollar valuation, but uh, over the past three years, Naira has moved from about three hundred naira to dollar to to six hundred naira to dollar. So it means that if 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 the company has not grown their Naira very significantly, it means that uh, the valuation could have been halved by now. You know, uh, you know as, as as the last time we checked, you know, uh, what's it called? Jumia was a one point five billion dollar business, but as of today, the equity value is less than. I mean, the the market cap is less than five hundred million dollars. So. Unicorn is not a permanent state of being. It's it's what you work at to, uh, to keep, right? And Excellent point. Given that you're in Nigeria, that your currency only goes in a, in a single direction, it means that you have to be competing against your currency first and then competing against other businesses to continue to grow your business. I mean, that's a difficult place to be. Speaking of Jumia, I can't believe I missed this. There's rumors of them being bought out or what, what's the... I didn't want to bring it up because it's still a rumor, but what, what, have, you, what have you heard? Yeah, so we've heard that Zynox uh, is as as Zynox, which is uh, what's it called, uh, Leo Stan Acre, uh, the founder of Zynox, uh, the founder of Udala, or the chairman of Udala that bought out Conga, had suggested that he wants to buy uh, Jumia. And of course, when when uh, you know, remember on the group, we did some analysis around it. Jumia, as a last year, uh, as a as a twenty twenty December, had about three hundred million dollars in cash. As a this year December, as a twenty twenty one December has less than uh, just about $100 million in cash. So it means that it spends about $200 million, you know, between that that period, 
Uh, so uh, my argument is that it's difficult. I mean, if Jumia continues to in that pace, it will run out of cash before the end of this year. If you can spend over $200 million in one calendar year alone in cash, right? It means that in a year, two things would, would, that, would that have to happen. Is that first, you might have to raise additional capital to shore up your, capital, your, your, your cash base because you have only about $100 million left and you spent $200 million last year. Or you cut your costs significantly that ensures that you're able to manage your cash a lot more efficiently. Right? Those two things will, will have to either happen, right? Uh, so, and people are saying that yes, they might not be able to raise money again. So it means that the only option they have is to cut cash, you know, or to force themselves to be more profitable with their businesses today. So if that continues to happen, then it means that uh, Jumia will be in a precarious situation, right? And of course, uh, a potential hostile takeover or even a friendly takeover would not be uh, far fetched, you know. Uh, but again, five hundred million dollars is not a small. It's not a small amount of money. But again, when you're when, when you're out of cash, five hundred million dollars. I mean, you won't have the negotiating power to negotiate anything, you know, of 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 significance of, of value. So again, we'll figure it out when we get there, I guess. So they're in a vulnerable position, and that's why it looks like he's pouncing to buy them out. Of course, they're in a vulnerable position. Yeah, if, if you're going to run out of cash, you're seeing your dead uh, your deadline. I mean, your 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 days are numbered. You know, cash is 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 like the blood in in the system. Once you run out of blood, you run out of life. You know, so that's what is happening. So if you if you if you if you if you burn through two hundred million dollars in one year, and you have only one hundred million dollars left, so it means that you probably have till June to leave. You know, maybe if you extend it a bit more, put you on life support, you have to December, right? And that, if you're seeing the end of your life, and someone is offering you guys, guy. Your, your, your market cap is saying you have 500 million dollar valuation, but guy, take 50 million dollars and, and be going. You know, you probably just take it and move on, right? Because you cut your losses and said, yes, if, if I don't take the 50 million dollars, I'll die either way. So let me just, you know, eat and die and then and then move on. Sorry, very quickly, is this, is this a, is this, a, is this a, is Jumia struggles a reflection of the challenge of e-commerce in Nigeria? Uh, so I, I don't think that we found a model that works well for e-commerce, right? Uh, you know, I've spoken to a few people that sell, you know, so one of my very close friends sells on, on Instagram. And I'm like, hey, why have I not built websites? I was like, yeah, it's difficult for people to, people don't like to buy on websites. You know, they'd rather send you DM on your Instagram. So she built a website, but she's telling me that uh, the, the amount it costs to encourage people to to, to buy on, 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 on Instagram is 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 more than than anything you're getting from it. So it just moves on like, okay, guy, let me just keep on selling on Instagram, which of course gives gives her this dependency on Mark. Uh, and of course, you know, the way Mark moves mad a few times, you just cancel your account, close it down a few times. All like that. So those risks are still there for him. So I guess that a few things are happening, right? Nigerians, I don't know, I'm not sure what the, I think it's this uh, trust that has not been built. Because what you see on, on Instagram is not what you get. Or what you see on, on, on e-commerce websites is most time not what you get. So people have learned that they, they don't trust that as number one. And of course, even when you trust, it means that you have to spend so much on marketing to get people to get to that point. And of course, it means that you're spending so much, you're getting so little because margins on e-commerce business are also very great. Right, so there are different issues around it. And of course, there's then delivery infrastructure in there. There is a cost of delivery to you. You know, just big, big, big problems that 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 you know one company has to just be figuring. It, it's it's service to have one company solve all of those you know myriad of problems at the same time, right? So if it's delivery, let someone else handle delivery. If it is encouraging people to to buy, let someone else handle that. Like that, big problems in them, you know, uh, in in themselves. And of course, it must also be that uh, you know the ambitions of of, of Jumia, for instance, they are building a Pan African business, right? Not just a Nigerian business, right? Mm -hmm. So they are probably in Malawi, some of those non-profitable countries, you know, that you know it's just burning cash or putting hold in their pockets rather than focused on maybe that key markets in Nigeria, Kenya, you know, Egypt and South Africa, which are the four biggest economies in Africa, or maybe throwing Ghana there for for good measure, right? You know, that's, that's probably, you know, maybe those are the few viable companies. Uh, uh, all right, companies. Fasaya, I mean, we, we've talked about InterSwitch, we've talked about uh, Jumia. But right before yeah. we get into talking uh, Disney and Twitter, I want to remind, you can be part of the show quickly. We're about to wrap up the conversation. Just send in your messages to WhatsApp 0809-444-0981. Fisaya, we saw uh, the former general manager of consumer department and head of products at Twitter, relieved mm -hmm. of his job while on paternity leave. Is that fair? 
<laughs> well, it wasn't relieved. It was just asked to leave. Like, you, 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 you're surplus to requirements right now, and I'm going in a different direction. So it was asked uh, to resign. Uh, the timing is awkward because, hey, uh, if you just had a baby, uh, the, the news you want to have is not the, the news of you leaving your job. It's mm. only because, I mean, in a market like this where uh, people are not as high, are not hiring as much, and of course, you don't have the best reputation uh, from, from from Twitter. So, again, it's difficult to get another job. So, uh, it's just one of those, you know, uh, hard decisions I believe CEOs will have to take. Right. Uh, from from what he said, he said the CEO said he wanted to take the company in a different direction. I mean, I don't understand what that means uh, from a from a staff perspective. But hey, you know, it's it's one of those things that like you know when when like uh, having considered all all these things, you just give some random excuse like we are going in a different direction. Uh, you you're not a culture fit. You know those excuses that that HR people use to to fire people that they don't want. So that that's all uh, the CEO told him. So I guess it's all it's right. one of those things that happens to everyone in the world, right? Quickly, Disney released its first quarter earnings uh, on Wednesday and Disney Plus, the streaming service, saw a rise of 7.9 million net subscribers, beating analyst estimates of 5.2 million. In fact, mm-hmm. uh, total subs got them about 137.7 million and uh, uh, Netflix total is about uh, 222 million. Do you think Disney can catch up with Netflix? No. <laughs> the way he just said it, no. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, I mean, Disney is still an American largely business. Uh, but, but we're seeing Netflix, Netflix lose a lot of subscribers, uh, the highest since they started. Yes. Uh, I mean, it's it's one of those things, right? There is, you know, uh, what was it called in economics? Uh, region of, I mean, the market's saturated already, right? So uh, people are, you know, diminishing return. Yeah, that's that's what I was looking for. Right? But, I mean, Disney, Disney Plus is not in Nigeria yet. It's not in many emerging markets. Uh, and those numbers are not trivial, right? Uh, you can't depend solely on just developer markets to be able to you know, to catch up with a global company. Right? You have to be global as well. Uh, and I'm not sure how much uh, Disney content that maybe people in, in, in other countries want to consume. Right? And, of course, also Disney is also, you know, charging some decent prices. So $7, average of $7, which, again, encourages them but from an operational efficiency perspective they might they might also be struggling uh because of the cost of content and a lot of the issues uh, relating to it so again there are different issues in there but uh we, we have you know we are out of time already so we can't yeah. actually go into, into the details let's, let's see if we can squeeze in this message in from Ian Carbon who says nice one let her feel what Trump felt when he was asked to leave Twitter waiting for Elon to hammer that CEO next for that uh, his response to Elon uh that's wow. that's about it but we need to okay, go wow. to <laughs> Fisayo, Fisayo, solid analysis. Thank you so much, Fisayo. Appreciate you uh, joining us today as usual. All right. Thank you thank very you much, that, gentlemen, thanks. for being a part of the show. You can catch Rotis on Twitter. It's at Rotan Coach. You can also catch Fisayo at Aremu Fisayo on Twitter and tag us into the conversation with Smooth981FM. Feel free to tag at Victor Pepple as well. We'll show exactly. we'll come back 6 30 on Monday. Thank you very right, much, Rotis and Fisayo, for joining in. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Bye. Brought to you by Enter Switch.